Hey everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and welcome to the recap of the September 2019 Chemnitz Dialogue. Last month we were inspired by the natural colors found in a beautiful mandarin duck and I hand painted some Wool of the Andes worsted weight yarn next to some Wool of the Andes roving. All of this fiber is 100% Peruvian Highland wool. It's all from Knit Picks. And I wanted to see, especially once it's dry, how things compare to one another. Before we go unwrap the fiber from the steamer basket to get a first look at how it turned out, I wanted to take this opportunity to ask you guys to make sure that you are subscribed to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel and turn on notifications. I love these dialogue live streams, but sometimes I also go live really last minute without advance notice, and you don't want to miss any of it. In addition to streams, I publish at least two new videos every week, and they're so much fun and you don't want to miss any of them. But fresh out of the steamer basket, here is our jelly roll. On the top, you can still see those blue and white stripes that we hand painted. On the bottom, ooh, I see some colors and it looks like some dye may have like pulled towards the bottom. I might regret, oh, maybe not. I was gonna say I might regret not wearing gloves, but this actually came out of the jelly roll really easily. I don't want to move the roving around too much, but, um, and especially when you have roving and it's in water, it can feel uh, more matted than it is, so always give it a chance to uh, come out. But, oof, okay, I'm really excited. Um, the roving, those colors look beautiful. And in our yarn, those white patches are, I'm glad I left them so big because let me show you. So there is, it looks like there's white all the way around. So from our blue and white stripes, there's some sunlight. And then with our black and white, those white stripes, remember how exaggerated I left them? It's a good thing I did because things really did spread out. Um, I really like this rusty color. It's looking a little more red than orange. And the sand dune also feels a little deeper than I thought but I am really, really into these colors. And I have to say, I'm really happy the white areas shrunk and that the colors spread out more. I was nervous about leaving so much white space and I was debating or regretting my decision not to use guar gum, but I think that this is great. Um, as for the fiber, we've got beautiful colors in here. I am going to go and wash everything real gently. Uh, there might be, it doesn't really look like bleeding as much as it does look a little cloudy, but I am going to go wash everything off camera with a tiny bit of soap, uh, put things through the spin dryer, and then we'll come back and look at the finished dried yarn. But for a first look, I have to say I'm really happy. As we wait for the fiber to dry, I wanted to remind you guys that I did save both my crayon swatches that I created from looking at our inspiration photo, but also some color swatches. Uh, so these are some mix, or just some drops of the acid dyes that I mixed. I will make sure to put the different proportions that I used and the colors that I used in the video description. Because I kept notes on my diary, haha, I have that information. Phew. <laughs> But yeah, I've never, I've never saved sort of the like paper towel color swatch before. I took the remaining bottles for the main colors that I had mixed, added some water to dilute the color, but to allow us to use these colors on some more yarn. The only one I did not dilute was the black. I pre-soaked another skein of Knit Picks Will of the Andes Worsted Weight Yarn in the exact same pre-soak water that I had used for the live stream. Um, I spread out plastic wraps, laid it on the counter, and then layered these colors on. Not going for the same colorway, but I didn't want to leave any dye behind. I was able to use up all the colors that I wanted, and I'm really happy with how this yarn came out. I then wrapped it up in the plastic wrap and steam set the color for 20 minutes on the stovetop. This month we were inspired by a gorgeous mandarin duck. I mean, look of the colors on this bird. There are so many colors that I could probably create 
multiple, multiple colorways inspired by just this one photo. I never would have thought to combine some of these colors together, but I love the way that this has turned out. The stripes on the bird inspired me to create a more hand-painted colorway. And I decided to do this on two different fiber bases. 100% Wool of the Andes Roving and Wool of the Andes Worsted Weight Yarn. All of this fiber is 100% Peruvian Highland wool from Knit Picks, but I don't think that I'd ever dyed them side by side before. And I thought it would be fun. And honestly, I am impressed with how similar the total tones came out once this is dry, because it definitely looked less intense on the roving when I was doing the actual hand painting. It's hard to say for sure. Well, within the purples, there's no question that we see some breaking there. We see some purples and some reds and some blues all broken apart. Wonderful. This is a mixture that I should play more with in the future. I'm not sure if we're necessarily seeing breaking in that orange we mixed, or if I'm seeing you know, sort of a blend of it with some of the black and maybe some of the sand dune, but there might be some breaking in there. Either way, I think that the breaking adds just another level of dimension to this colorway. For sharper sections of color, it would absolutely be worth using some guar gum to sort of hit those sharp, crisp lines like we see on the duck. Similarly, uh, using the guar gum would make these blacks more intense. Right now, we've got sort of like a charcoal gray color because the color spread out, but if we were able to sort of have it remain in the tight line that we initially put on because there was a thickener that prevented it from spreading, we would get closer to a true black. The fiber is a little compressed and maybe because of like the amount that I was pushing it, there is a tiny bit of light felting around the edges. Honestly, I haven't had like that much in a while. I think I was just manipulating it a lot. Um, but it is easily like, it's definitely, there's no heavy felting. It's easy to like fluff up and it'll be extremely, extremely easy to spin. It's been a while since I've hand painted fiber. And so I think that, you know, even just the like pressing to spread it out does cause some agitation. And so I think that I prefer the results that I've been getting on roving using low immersion techniques, because even if I needed to flip or gently move it, I'm not, I'm not seeing like any surface rubbing or agitation on it. So it just comes out of the spin dryer fluffier. That's not to say that this isn't gorgeous fiber because it is. I just want to be perfectly honest on any like downsides of anything I ever do. Finally, since I wanted to leave no dye behind, I took a second skein of the Wool of the Andes Worsted Weight Yarn and diluted the blue, the purple, and this rust orange color to create another colorway. Now the sand dune and the black remained in their 1% stock solutions, and this colorway is really, really cute and pretty. Um, but you know, you can see a lot of the colors have a little bit less of a punch that they did than they did in the original because they were more dilute. The fiber fluffed up beautifully and I love the way it looks in this braid so much. Now comes my favorite the heart for the Chemnitz Dialong recap where I feature some of your photos of the yarn that you dyed using the same photo of the mandarin duck that I did as your inspiration. I love seeing the different colors and techniques that people pull together as they create and play with color on their own. It's great to see how many different ways different eyes and people can interpret one photo. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and thank you so much for joining me for this dialogue. I love the colors that we created this time and it's really fun to mix up the different techniques and yarn bases that I use for these dialogues. What would you like to see next month? 
I have an idea already for a photo that I want to use. Um, but so stay tuned and make sure you follow me on Instagram and Facebook so you don't miss the release of the October Chemnitz Dialogue inspiration photo. October will actually be the birthday because the very first dialogue I did was in October 2018. Funny. <laughs> it's fun to have lots of anniversaries uh, in the October month for all things Chemnitz related. If you want to help support the Chemnitz channel and you're already subscribed and have your notifications on by tapping that bell, uh, you can purchase yarn that I dye in my videos through the Chemnitz Creations Etsy store, and I also have a Patreon. You can find links for everything in the video description. Pre-orders for the Chemnitz Hanukkah special are open, and so you can order a sampler to unwrap a mini skein each night while watching a new dyeing video. Links for that will also be in the video description. Thank you so much for watching, everyone.